How do you wire a DC disconnect? Today I'm going to show you how to wire this PV isolator that's used to disconnect my solar panels from the rest of my solar setup. And I'm also going to show you a way to use a multimeter to check and make sure the disconnect is properly working. You're watching Taddy Digest. I'm Tad. Let's get started. With the Phillips screwdriver, you can actually loosen the two screws, one on top, one on bottom, and then you can pull this piece off. And this is the knob that you use to turn the disconnect off and on. What that will do is that will disconnect the power coming from the solar panels going to the charge controller. So if I want to change some wiring, replace the distributor, the inverter, I can just turn the disconnect off so I don't have that voltage that's produced by the array during the day when there's sunlight coming in here because I don't want to get shocked, get hurt. So this is a safety device. Now, you can see right here, we've got four terminals on the bottom and we've got four terminals on the top. And normally for an AC disconnect, you would, you would say, well, this terminal goes to this terminal and this terminal goes to this terminal. This terminal goes to this terminal. So all these terminals, you would have the input and then the output directly above it, but that's not the case. And you can actually see on the wiring diagram, one of these will be labeled positive, negative, positive, negative. The way that you wire this is you wire the terminal all the way to the left, right, would be my positive. And then the terminal down here to the right would be my positive. So one would go to two, right? Three would go to four. Five would go to six. Seven would go to eight. And I'm going to show you that real quick, and then I'm going to show you how I know it's working, right? by using our meter. So you can see right here, it says one, right? Three, five, seven. At the bottom, eight, six, four, two. So one right there would go to two. See that? And then three would go to four. And you can see in the diagram of how it has this terminal right here labeled as one, and it has a label on the wiring diagram that says positive. So positive, positive, negative, negative. And that's just so that you don't mix anything up and you don't cross your negative and your positive. How do we test with our multimeter and check the DC disconnect to make sure it's working properly? We first take the multimeter or the voltmeter and we turn the dial to where it says VDC. That's volts DC. We're not going to measure volts AC because our solar panels produce DC current when the sunlight hits the panels. So you can see the disconnect is in the on position, right? So in the on position, the wires that come out that go to the connections labeled negative and positive for PV on the charge controller, that's where we're going to put our meter leads. And you can see it's producing 14 volts DC, right? So whenever we take and turn this off, it should disconnect the panels from the charge controller. So now we've got zero volts DC. All right, now if we take and we turn it back on and we take the cover off and we measure the power coming in, 14, right? And then the power coming out, 14, okay? We put it back on like this, then we turn it off and take it back off. And if we measure coming in again, right, 114, okay, sun must be really hitting those panels, and then zero. So a properly working DC disconnect or uh, PV isolator, DC isolator, whenever you turn it off, you should not have power coming out of it, right? You should have input but no output. And you should always remember that it's not like an AC disconnect. You've got four poles, right, or four um, sets of contacts but they're not directly lined up. You should follow the numbers, right? One goes to two, three goes to four, five goes to six, seven goes to eight. You can also download a manual for this DC disconnect. I'll show you the model number of this one. Make sure that you get the right one. Each one is rated for a different amperage and a different voltage. You need to make sure with your PV solar array, how many panels you have, how much amps and voltage it will produce, and then you will figure out what DC disconnect you need. 
If you're still unsure on how to wire the DC disconnect, I'm going to show you a way to do a continuity test with your meter to figure out which terminal goes to which terminal from the top terminals to the bottom terminals or bottom terminals to the top terminals. Then I'm going to show you my solar setup and I'm going to give you a discount code. So if you want a solar setup, you can get a discount when you go to order one. So using the meter here, we can turn it to something called ohms, right? And that is right here. And it'll display something that is OL, right? See where it says OL? Now, if we take our meter leads and we put them together, we're closing the loop. So we have continuity, right? And then if we take them off, we have open loop, right? So there's no continuity. So if we take our meter, right? Right here beside the disconnect. If the disconnect is in the on position, right? We take this off. And then we take... You know, one goes to two, three goes to four. I'm not going to measure continuity with the power going through it. But we should have continuity between five and six, right? Five and six. See that? So five and six, we know those are connected because we've got continuity. Now, if we measure from eight, seven to eight, look, we should have continuity. See, seven to eight, we've got continuity. Five to six, we've got continuity. And we would have continuity from three to four. But if you check from, let's say, five to eight, right? Open loop. We're not going to have anything. See that? If we check from seven to six, open loop, right? So we can figure out which set of contacts is a good setup for our wiring, right? Which contacts are connected, which contacts are not connected. Now, if we take our DC disconnect, we put it back on, and then, or our knob, and then we turn it off. Now, if we check from five to six, look, we got nothing. Five to six, we got nothing. Seven to eight, we got nothing. All right, do the same thing, put it back on. Right there, turn it on. All right, now we check from five to six. What we got? We got continuity? We got continuity. Seven to eight, we got continuity. All right, that's how to wire it. Now I'm gonna show you my setup and sh give you a discount. I got my solar set up from Signature Solar. If you're looking for a really good setup, Signature Solar has got you covered for off-grid systems, grid-tied systems. You got an RV, you need a solar system. They've got systems under 15,000 and they've got systems for RVs, mobile systems. So definitely check out Signature Solar. And if you do want a discount, use code TADDY50. You can use this link right here to go to their website and use TADDY50 to get a $50 discount on any order over $500. So this is my solar setup and this is my solar powered shed. I've got lights in here and the reason those lights are working is because of this setup. Little overview here. I've got solar panels outside, which I'm going to show you, but the power comes in here, goes to the DC disconnect, and then goes to the charge controller. From the charge controller, we go to a distributor, and my battery, EG4 400 amp hour battery, is connected to my distributor, and then my distributor is connected to my inverter. This is a 1200 watt pure sine wave inverter, and I've got a Victron charge controller, a Victron distributor, Victron Gerbo GX, this is the monitoring solution that I use to be able to monitor this solar setup whenever I'm away because there's an app, Bluetooth, you can utilize that. From the inverter, I've got a plug, AC out, 110 volt plug going into a breaker box. And I've got a breaker for my receptacles inside and outside, and I've got a breaker for my lights inside and outside. I'm gonna show you my solar panels. This right here is the solar panels mounted on a dual access solar tracker made by EcoWorthy. And you can see the sun is right there in the sky. So with the controller, with the sunshine sensor, we're able to track the sun. And this makes my solar setup more efficient. I'll show you the controller here. This is the controller. I've got a wind speed sensor just in case we experience a high wind condition. If you guys want a discount, use discount code TADDY30 for a $30 off discount at EcoWorthy. You can use this link right here or check out the link in the description. If you want to learn how to uh, set up the controller and program it, you want to learn how to put this dual access tracker together or assemble the panels on the tracker system, 
check out the videos I put down below for you to learn how. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know in the comments what it was. If you got a question, ask the question because questions can lead to new content. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. You've been watching Taddy Digest. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you powered up if you let me.